go. Hi, everybody. I am here to talk to you about the um, cardamom oil, the um, beautiful little green seeds. Um, okay, so let me just give you a little um, overview of what cardamom is about. So cardamom is in the ginger family and it is steam distilled. Steam distilled. The seeds um, are steam distilled. So the um, the cardamom pod is like a little like lime green pod and it's filled full of these little brown seeds and that's what's distilled. And it's a it's mainly known for its gastrointestinal and respiratory health qualities, um, as well as cooking and baking, especially in the Indian community. Um, but everyone loves it, or many people love um, love it. And it um, kind of, it has the aromatic, aromatic qualities of being really spicy and fruity and warm, sort of balsamic, I, I read, um, which I think is a really accurate and kind of fun description. But it also has like a really cool and minty sort of quality. And so it's super complex and really unique. And the main chemical components are um, things that I can't really just uh, pronounce very well, but I'm going to try my best. Um, terpenyl acetate and um, linalool acetate and um, Sabine, is it Sabine or something like that. <laughs> um, the the chemists are probably just like turning over in their graves right now. Uh, and the and linalool is another thing, but. A cardamom is especially rich in phytonutrients, um, particularly in manganese, which helps the body form connective tissue and um, also really focuses on bones and the sex hormones also. So that's kind of a cool little thing. And a fun fact, its nickname is not by me this time, but by other people. <laughs> it is the queen of spices. So I can just see the little pod with the little queen's crown on. Kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so cardamom is um, a really interesting oil. It has you know, lots of the same qualities as many essential oils. It's antiseptic, it's an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Um, and it also has um, qualities of being antispasmodic, so particularly in um, the muscles. So it's really good for like muscle cramps and, um, or like if you, you know, pull a muscle or pull, you know, something like when you're exercising or whenever that might happen in the middle of the night. Um, but also kind of thinking about um, the respiratory system. So it's really good for, uh, to promote clear breathing and, um, you know, and thinking through the, the anti-spasmodic um, sort of vein, you know, uh, asthma, um, congestion, it's a, it's a expectorant, like I said, so it, it sort of works on congestion and coughs. And then it also has really strong digestive qualities. And I think that's, it really supports the digestive system. Um, it, you know, indigestion, it's also a diuretic. And so probably not eating too much of this oil would probably be, be good for you. But if you're looking for a cleansing um, uh, oil, this is, this is really good. It also has a warming quality. So it heats up the body, which is really good for, um, clearing the congestion and the coughs, you know, so you're sort of like seeing how it actually works. Um, and it promotes sweating, which is really good if you're dealing with um, like, a, you know, a cold and you just really need to relieve symptoms from that. It also um, you know, works on headaches and um, you know, Ill illnesses like diarrhea because it, it sort of like works through the body to, to warm it. Some additional uses are, which these, this is kind of a fun list. It um, promotes mental clarity and openness. So um, particularly for anger and frustration. Um, one, of, one tip I read was if you're wanting to um, focus on something or have uh, me measurable results, you can put it in different parts of the room, diffusing it, in, you know, 
in the room or even just dropping drops in the corner of the room. I mean, I'm not sure exactly why, but that was one of the things I read. They're just kind of fun to maybe try. It's also an aphrodisiac and it helps with bad breath, which is probably a good combo. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it um, has been proven to help with um, nausea as well. Historically, people have used it for um, epilepsy, which kind of works with the antispasmatic, you know, uh, realm, um, paralysis, cardiac disorders, pulmonary disease, which that makes sense with those respiratory um, results, fever, also, again, you know, warming the body, all of doing that, digestive and urinary, urinary complaints. And then neutralizing lingering um, garlic sense, which is back to the bad breath. Um, but garlic is really good for you too. So it's probably like, a, that's, you know, they're often found together in, in food. And then they're having, um, they're showing a lot of promise in areas of loss of, loss of appetite, sciatica, ulcer, like stomach ulcers, um, easing symptoms of menstruation or menopause cancer, diabetes, these are, this is not proven, but it's showing like there's a lot of studies around this. So cancer, diabetes, lowering blood, blood pressure, cavities, or toothaches. Um, and the, the, I think I sort of mentioned the aromatic qualities or, or influence, but it's really uplifting. It's really refreshing and invigorating and it clears confusion, which that's amazing. So you can use it topically, or, or, um, aromatically, or internally, and um, you can, you know, massage it on your reflex points or you directly on the, you know, the, your body parts, uh, wherever wherever you're thinking like that might be. You might find the most benefit. Um, you could dilute it or use it neat. It, it's you know, up, depending on what kind of skin sensitivity you have normally or just your preference. You can also use it as a bath oil, and that has, you know, it has like a really interesting. So you'll probably just dis discover new things as your new new scents as you're laying there for however long you take your bath. Uh, you can also inhale it directly or diffuse it in your diffuser. Uh, internally, you can just place it one drop under your tongue, or um, mix in some honey or four ounces of liquid. And then I also, you know, mentioned it's really common in baking or cooking. So some fun little blends or, or recipes that I found. One was a spiced chai latte diffuser blend. So this would be really fun in the winter. You know, you're like really wanting that, but maybe you're not. Yeah, exactly. You're not drinking a, a lot of um, caffeine. This could be a fun alternative. So you drop three drops of cardamom two cinnamon, one clove, and one, or two, sorry, three cardamom, two cinnamon, two clove, and one ginger. So I'm really, I haven't tried this, but it sounds very fun, and I, I think it would be really interesting. Another one that I thought was a nice way to, you know, a, a, a sort of more creative way to to use it is through bath salt. So you can combine two cups of Himalayan pink salt and which have a lot of healing qualities in themselves, um, six drops of cardamom and four drops of lavender. And then you just mix it in like a mason jar. Make sure it's glass though. Don't, don't use a plastic uh, jar. And then just, you know, spoon in um, how much ever you want in your bath. Of course, if you didn't want to use two cups, you can always, you know, just kind of reduce. Maybe that's too much for you to try the first time around. And then this one, I mean, this doesn't really apply to me, clearly, but the next one is kind of fun. If you have someone in your life who has a beard, this is a conditioning beard oil, which I just couldn't resist. I had to share this. My brother-in-law has this, like, huge, bushy beard, so I'm excited to share this with my sister. <laughs> um, so it's argan oil, 15 mill milliliters of argan oil, um, 15 milliliters of jojoba. You could probably use different. Um, oils, but I think these are probably good for conditioning here. Um, four drops of cardamom, seven drops of sandalwood, four drops of grapefruit, and then three drops of bergamot. So just you mix it all together. It's kind of a fun little. Would you mind saying what the drops were again? You said oh, of course. Drops, cardamom, seven drops. Sandalwood. Four and grapefruit. And three bergamot. So that's that's it might work for your hair too. I don't know. I mean, I have I have no idea. Probably you 
beard hair is sort of more coarse though. So, <laughs> um, and then you can always add it to bread or even smoothies would be really interesting, uh, meats or salads. And all of that is remember aiding in your digestion. So just make sure you're adding the amount of drops you want. <laughs> And then I always like to add a little, um, a pairing uh, guide. So cardamom often pairs with, or pairs well with bergamot, cedarwood, cinnamon, clove. This is the, the latte. Um, wild orange, rose, and ylang ylang. And apparently also um, lavender is a good combo because we already mentioned that. But And then the only other thing I wanted to mention was the, the doTERRA really guides that you don't use this, use cardamom oil on any one under six. So, and then just use it more, um, more cautiously or maybe more diluted with children who are over six. But other than that, like use away. And I also wanted to share on doTERRA's website, there's a really fun sourcing video that shows um, the, you know, doTERRA interacting with farmers in Guatemala. And it's, it's very cool. So you can find that on the website. It's a YouTube video. So, that's uh, cardamom in a nutshell, or a, a little green pod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, Billy. That was so interesting. I have to say, I do have one personal experience yeah. with cardamom, especially with the warming quality of it. Yeah. I once put, I was in um, a meeting with a prospective enrollee, and I love the smell of cardamom, and I put two drops on my wrist just because I wanted to wear it as a perfume. Right. And my entire body got hot. Ah. So much to the point, I had to take my sweater off because I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. But it was like instantaneous. And I don't, yeah. I haven't had that experience with any other oil, which is instant heat response to my body. Right. And also, okay, so heard, that's great. Yeah. So that's right there. For anybody who deals with uh, low body temperatures or like cold extremities, that's really good. Um, the other thing is, and especially for people of Swedish uh, origin or ancestry, um, the Swedes put cardamom in their coffee. Oh, yes, of Everyone course. Buy just a drop of cardamom oil in your morning coffee. It is spectacular. It that is sounds spectacular. delicious. Yeah, I mean, even I would go as far, I've seen a couple videos on the doTERRA website talking about people who are wanting to give up dairy and yeah. include a drop of cinnamon into their black coffee. And I wouldn't be surprised if one drop of cinnamon, one drop of cardamom, that, I mean, that would turn coffee into a whole different experience. Um, in fact, I may, I may try that uh, after this call. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, but this is brilliant, Billy. Thank you so much. Thank you for and sharing that. Absolutely. I mean, Mauro's on mute right now, so I don't know uh, if he has any questions or not. But um, uh, just thank you. That was so interesting. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Enjoy using. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mauro, do you have any questions for Billy before uh, I stop recording? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Thank cool. you for your presentation. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Billy. Bravo. Thanks. <laughs>